Yeah. Okay, you can really tell the character of a person um, by putting them under stress. You go to, this, to their house, you wake them up in the middle of the night, and you say, I want to borrow two dollars for a beer. No, not <laughs> I'm kidding. That joke gets better every time I tell it. Anyway, just asking for bread or something in need of a friend, whatever, you know. Someone who is in good character will come to the door and help you. As a friend of mine who was a preacher, been preaching for a couple of years, I came to his house and knocked on the door and it wasn't in, in the night. Their house was dirty. They pretended like they weren't home. <laughs> Some friend that was. Anyway, <clears throat> but that's a test of the character of a person. And uh, Jesus talked about this in Luke, in Luke 11, 5. Not 15, Luke 11, 5. It's a little story here. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go to him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is on his journey and come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is shut, my children are with me in the bed, I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, that's Jesus saying, I'm telling you this, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his important importancy he will rise and give him as many as is needed <clears throat> he said and Jesus says I say unto you ask and it shall be given you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be open unto you for everyone that asks receiveth and to him seeketh he findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open if a son shall ask bread of any of you that his father will give him, will he, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if he asks an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them to ask or, or good things? The, the Holy Spirit is our teacher and our guide, the Bible tells us. Um, so that's what he was talking about there. Not just a way. There's an old saying that says, if you give a man a loaf of bread, you fed him for a day. If you teach him how to make bread, how to make bread, you fed him for a lifetime. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Not, not just give somebody a little, but if you really love that person, if you care about that person, you'll give to them everything that you need. My, my wife's mother, who's here with us today, uh, every time she thinks we have a need, she'll, whether we need it or not, she'll come over and she'll say, now, Joyce, I don't want to hear this. You're going to take this. <laughs> and my honey laughs at it, but she goes ahead and takes it. <laughs> So, yeah, and that's what a real friend, that's what somebody who cares, that's what they do. And the Lord talked to him again in Luke 9, 55. Now, a couple of his disciples were um, uh, upset with, <coughs> excuse me, they were upset with some people of Samaria who they had went to uh, to preach and the, the people of Samaria wouldn't, wouldn't uh, accept them into their town. And so the disciples, they asked Jesus, they said, Lord, would you have us call fire down from heaven and consume them like Elijah did? <laughs> and Jesus said, stop, hold, oh, wait a minute, fellas. Said, you don't know what kind of spirit that you are of. That's a, that's a really neat story about how that um, uh, the Lord taught us to do those things. I remember one time I was at work, my boss um, <laughs> he he messed up the schedule of people. He didn't. Some of the people didn't know when to come in. And I had worked 12 hours already, 
and nobody was coming in to cover me. I waited 10 minutes, I waited 15 minutes, and and I don't get paid after 12 hours, so I had to call somebody. So I had to leave no matter what, you know. So I called somebody, so I called my boss, the one that does the scheduling, who's right over me. And this is how he answered the phone. He says, look, I'm asleep here. Ask somebody else, click. I, I didn't know who to ask, you know. I mean, how in the world could I, you know, I'm not, I can't call somebody. I don't have any authority to do that at work. I can't call and say, listen, come in to work right now. So, I didn't know what to do. I called his boss. Whoa. <laughs> you know, more did I stir stuff up. I called his boss and I said, look. I said, I called Ed and he's, he told me he's sleeping, don't bother him. And he says, look, he says, call such and such a person and ask him if he'll come in. And that's all I heard from him that night. <laughs> when I came in the next day, boy, my boss is right over. His face was on the floor. He was walking down around with, I mean, he was, you know, he was not in a good mood. <laughs> he later said, man, said, I almost got fired over that, you know. But the character of a person, you know, when you move up in rank and place, places and factories and church and things like that, it should be people that have good character. And, and I know for the most part, some people do try to choose people in that fashion. But a lot of times they choose people who argue their way to the top. Those are the kind of people who have, doesn't have very good character. Even in the, the, the politics of our church, and um, in the politics of our government. People who have the best argument, people who have the best uh, uh, story that they can back themselves up with. And, and a lot of them just use, they get so many cliches that they use and to fend people off. They don't, they, they're not looking for something new, original, or something that is uh, helpful. They're not looking for that. And a person with true character is filled with that kind of stuff. He's looking to help. He's looking to want to cause people to be have an easier job, to make more money if they can, to try to um, uh, help that person have a better, easier day. You know, when I'm, I'm at work, man, I, I work my whole shift to try to clean everything up so when the next shift comes in, they can have a good start for the day. Now, it doesn't happen 100% of the time, but I bet you 90 to 95% of the time I usually get to that place where they can have a good day. And so much that the fellow came in one time and the uh, older guy that I work with, um, he's on thirds, I'm on seconds, he came in one day and he says, you know, said you left a piece of paper in the tray back there where it didn't belong. You know? <laughs> And I don't know how many days I I come in and the whole place is a wreck. I mean, I have to work sometimes the first two, maybe three hours sometimes cleaning up what day shift left me. But yet the guy on third shift, he has a piece of paper out of place and he's complaining. <laughs> I once told him, you know, after about five years of his complaining, I, I once told him, I said, you should have to come and work on my shift for a while, you'd be a happy man after that. <laughs> so, but the, a person of good character, they strive to do good things and make life better for other people. That's why Jesus told these men here, you don't know what kind of spirit that you are of. Uh, should do that. Should work for the good, whatever purpose. You know, whatever you're doing, negative, positive, we are put together with both but we should try to work, strive for a good character. Apostle Paul says, I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And if you do that, that will give you a good character. All right, God bless. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next time right here across in the middle ministry. Get over here and do your job. I'm sure. <laughs>